Good day, and as we begin to wind down instruction in meteorology, I trust that you found this course to be a worthwhile course, uh, somewhat challenging, I'm sure, and interesting at the same time. Uh, Professor Sills here, and um, I want to make sure that you are scheduled for your final exam, so please follow the, the uh, directions, instructions that were in the email that explain to you how to go about doing that. Um, let me... Uh, use the majority of this particular video to go over, uh, review with you your chapter 11 questions and uh, enhance things a little bit as I've been with the other chapters. Uh, I'm also going to give you a chapter 12 assignment which will deal with cyclones and uh, uh, depending on how uh, verbose I am in the next few minutes I may break this up into two videos, I'm not sure. Okay, so um, for chapter 11 you're looking at air masses and fronts and you know, here's the important thing to understand, that air masses are essentially high pressure systems. When you see the H on the map, like as in right here, uh, you're looking at a high pressure system. And that air mass had to originate somewhere. Uh, fronts simply separate air masses. We can imagine that there would be an H for a high pressure system down here, and in between the H's is going to be an L, and that's your low pressure system, that's your cyclone. So looking at page 310, number two, it's summer, what type of afternoon weather would you expect from an air mass designated as maritime tropical? Well, maritime tropical air is very prevalent in this area of the country throughout the summer, and you could really reach that up into New Jersey, and you know, forgetting about the storm system I'm showing here, you could reach it up into New England uh, quite often as well. And in maritime tropical air, the two key characteristics you need to know about are warm and humid. And if you combine that with summer, you're going to have a certain lift to the atmosphere, you're going to have enough moisture in the atmosphere, you're going to form clouds. And think about as the air is rising vertically, fairly rapidly, uh, what are you going to form? You're going to form cumulus clouds. And if those cumulus clouds rise high enough and fast enough, they're going to become cumulonimbus clouds, which is where your afternoon thunderstorms come from. Uh, the area of the country I'm living in right now, uh, that's very famous for the 2.30 p.m. thunderstorm rolling through. And uh, again, it's a negative feedback mechanism. It was the warming that caused the air to rise, uh, forming the thunderstorm, and of course then there is the, um, uh, the subsequent uh, uh, cooling as a result of the thunderstorm, and that shuts down the cumulonimbus cloud and the entire formation. So by evening, the skies begin to clear out. Okay, looking at number three. Uh, why is continental polar air not welcome in the central plains in the winter, yet very welcome in the summer? Well, uh, continental polar air originates up in northern Canada. Um, you know, the designation, the delineation between continental polar air and Arctic air is fairly minimal. So, um, uh, whether it's continental polar or Arctic, if it's January or February, that means you have very cold air advecting or traveling southward from the Arctic or from northern Canada and it's going to be cold and dry. Um, so in particularly this area of the country, um, you may wake up in the morning to temperatures around minus 20 to minus 40 Fahrenheit. Uh, very, very cold conditions, sometimes pretty good wind, um, and it's just very unpleasant. Whereas in the summer, uh, on the occasion when these continental polar air masses break through, the prevalent maritime tropical air throughout much of the eastern and central U.S. At, in the summertime, um, those cool polar air masses are highly welcome because they will drop the temperatures down. Temperatures may fall from 90 to 100 degrees even in a place like Minneapolis uh, back down into the 70s and humidities will come down as well because the dew point of these uh, polar air masses is much lower. Looking at number seven, temperature moisture characteristics of each of the, of the uh, air masses, you know this by now. Uh, we're talking about maritime tropicals, warm humid. Uh, continental tropical would be hot and dry. Uh, maritime polar. When you hear maritime, think humid. When you hear polar, think cool. So it's moist and cool. And continental polar would be dry and cool or cold. And uh, Arctic would be cold. There's no other way around it. Lake effect snows, now that's an interesting phenomenon because what happens is when cold air blows across the lakes, if they're still not frozen and still warmer than the surrounding air, what'll happen is moisture gets picked up from the lakes 
and then uh, is carried into the uplands of, uh, let's say, western New York and into northwestern Pennsylvania, again, having nothing to do with this front here. Um, you see the northwesterly winds, air coming from the northwest, carry that moisture across the lakes, and the net result is you end up with uh, snowfall, sometimes very, very heavy snowfall, to the lee of the lakes, in other words, to the east of the lakes. Now, does it reach New Jersey? No, because uh, New Jersey is on the downslope from the Appalachian Mountains. So if this is Lake Erie, you're going to have an upslope, which then causes the air to rise, cool just a little bit, lose its ability to hold that water vapor, and the net result is snowfall, sometimes at the rate of two, three, four inches an hour. It can be very, very impressive phenomena. So uh, they always occur to the east of the lakes or downwind from wherever the wind is blowing and they usually shut down by February because by then the lakes are frozen at least some of them uh, not all the lakes freeze maritime polar air mass is looking at number nine uh, along the east coast colder than those in the nation's west coast well we don't have a map here of the west coast but I, I, I know you know that uh, weather travels at this point from west to east if I'm diagramming this properly with my hands I'll do it over here weather generally travels west to east well that's great and if you think about it from the west coast west of the west coast is the Pacific Ocean so the maritime polar air masses that are affecting the Pacific coastline are coming in off the Pacific are truly maritime polar air masses on the other hand over here Maine Nova Scotia uh, this area, if it's going to be affected by maritime polar air, it's probably an air mass that parks itself up in this area, picks up some moisture, but that air mass was originally continental polar. It originated over here. It traveled eastward, which means it is a cold polar, continental polar air mass that worked its way to the coastline, and when it got over water, it picked up the moisture, making it a maritime polar air mass, but a fairly cold one. All right. The boundaries between neighboring air masses tend to be more distinct in the winter than summer. Well, that's absolutely true. Why? Because in the winter, even up until about this time of year, there is a very, very distinct difference between the weather down here and the weather up there. In other words, the weather in the southeast U.S. versus the northern Great Plains. In the winter, temperatures here, as I noted earlier, can be minus 20 to minus 40 temperatures here are going to be 60, 70, 80 degrees, giving a very large temperature contrast across the continental United States. Remember I commented that we do not have an east-west mountain range the way Europe does and the way Asia does, basically blocking polar air or Arctic air from the maritime air, which is why you can go to Italy and southern Italy. It's very rare, uh, despite their middle latitude status, to get Arctic air, whereas in South Carolina or in Georgia or North Florida, it can become quite frigid uh, for even brief periods of time. Well, in the summer, when, th when the sun is high in the sky and has been baking the atmosphere and the Arctic air is retreated northward, basically the entire continental U.S. warms up, and where it could be 90 degrees in Miami, it could actually be warmer in Minneapolis, St. Paul. I've seen it happen. So uh, June, July, August uh, into September, uh, the fronts tend to be much weaker because the boundary, the differences between the air masses are much less distinct. Okay, um, we're going to wrap up with number 11, then I'll make a new video for the balance and then give you a new assignment. <coughs> Type of air mass responsible for the following weather conditions. Heavy snow showers and low temperatures of Buffalo do not be fooled by the fact that it says heavy snow showers. If you're going to get heavy snow showers, it's probably lake effect. Know where Buffalo is. Look at a map, it's right about here. All right? Look at a map, and you'll see that if Buffalo is going to get heavy snow showers, it probably has a north northwest wind coming across Lake Ontario. And that means that you've got continental polar air moving in. Yes, I know it's cool, dry air. However, after it picks up moisture as the air travels across the lake, it is now much more moist, almost like maritime polar, but it's so small scale we don't call it that. Hot, muggy summer weather in the Midwest and the East. Well, here we go. That's your maritime polar air, uh, maritime tropical air. That air is very prevalent July and August across the center of the United States. Daily afternoon thunderstorms on the Gulf Coast. Classic maritime tropical. Letter E. 
Refreshing cool breezes after a long hot summer spell. Maritime polar. That's the only explanation. It's got to be cool, dry Canadian air. And finally, letters H and J, persistent, cold, damp weather with drizzle along the East Coast. Those are some of the most depressing days that I recall in New Jersey in late November and in December when an air mass sets itself up over the uh, maritimes of Canada or out in the Atlantic and pumps in easterly winds, winds blowing from the east, and that means it's coming across cool waters, and we have a week or a few days of cloudy, uh, drizzly weather temperatures in the upper 30s and lower 40s. And then finally, record low winter temperatures in South Dakota, continental polar or most likely Arctic air. With that, I'm going to stop the video right now. I'm going to process it and then I'm going to continue with the remaining questions and also with an assignment for chapter 12. Thank you.